Apple's ginormous iPad ship today. The iPad Pro reviews are hitting the internet. Patrick Moorhead wrote an extensive review for Forbes based on a week of hands-on testing, and he joins us now. Welcome to the show, Patrick. Uh, thanks for having me on, Mike. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you coming on. Now, Apple appears to be positioning the iPad Pro as something of a laptop replacement or at least a Surface Pro replacement. What do you think? Can you replace your laptop with an iPad Pro? I would say right now the answer is no. And, and it's interesting. I came into this week thinking that I would have the answer to that question. But every time I try to compare it to a Surface uh, or even a notebook uh, what I, or even a Mac, what, what I came back with was this thing is an iPad because there are a lot of considerations to put in. And once you realize that Apple isn't trying to do this, you say, OK, they're trying to make an iPad that does a whole lot more things that is a whole lot more powerful. That's that's kind of where I left it. So so to me, Pat, and I've only just got mine about 30 minutes ago, so I have you know no perspective on it whatsoever. Um, yes, it is a big iPad, as we were making fun of just as the show started. Um, but, you know, part of me says maybe it's not a laptop replacement yet. And that's because Apple has pretty much put out really powerful, at least what I think is really powerful hardware and hoping that developers then create purpose in, in the apps for it. Do you think that's a fair assessment? I think it's a very fair assessment. And I actually cover that uh, in, in the very long concluding uh, paragraph that I had. I think, you know, in pure Apple fashion, uh, like the iPhone and the iPad, uh, Apple builds it and the developers come. And I really think we're just scratching the surface here. I mean, I, I use some incredible apps. One of them was Umake. I used some Adobe apps that were incredibly powerful. And they were incredibly powerful, not in that they were difficult, but they took very high density content, uh, even 4K video, 8, 12, 16 megapixel pictures, and even made it easy for a person like me to do very, very intensive uh, modifications. Uh, you make essentially enable somebody who's really good at doing 2D drawings mm -hmm. to create it and convert it automatically. And yes, that, that's a word. I, I just created that uh, into a 3D drawing to give uh, the 3D uh, CAD folks to give a, a better representation. So a really long answer to your question, Kevin, but I totally agree. We've just scratched the surface here. <laughs> Patrick, I have a bunch of Pixel devices, and the screens on these devices are great. I absolutely love them. And uh, more to the point, once I've started using a Pixel quality display, I going back is just it's just nails on chalkboard. Can't do it. I won't do it. And uh, and and I think they just look fantastic. But how does this display compare? I mean, Apple made a whole bunch of claims about how this is revolutionary, et cetera. But how does this really compare to your average ordinary Pixel display? Well, I've used the Pixel Display, and uh, for my use cases, I really felt like I got a lot more out of the iPad Pro. Uh, it's big, and with a big display, it's challenging to have the right color clarity out there. And I, I really think Apple nailed it. Uh, one of the usage models that I really enjoyed was going in and looking at pictures uh, that I took with either a high-quality camera or even with my iPhone 6S Plus. Uh, movies were good too. Now, would I have wanted a, a 4K display? Yeah, but I also, you know, want unicorns on a Sunday <laughs> for dinner. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Pat. In a in a prior life, you you and I go way back. We used to talk when you were at a major chip maker, and you know silicon. So I'm really curious in terms of performance. I've seen some benchmark tests and whatnot. But what do you make of the Apple A9X that's inside the iPad Pro? Because I think it's one of the compelling features, and that really gets us back to that whole mobile versus desktop transition. The, the A9X is, is stunning. I mean, I don't even have uh, words for it. I wouldn't have bet money that Apple would, con would have continued this generation after generation. But versus the iPad Air, it's two to six times higher performance. And I did finally post some benchmarks uh, up there. And compared to Samsung, I mean, it just obliterates everything. And compared to the even the iPhone 6S Plus, uh, you're looking at two to three times the graphics performance and about 30% improvement uh, on the processor itself. I mean, this thing is very, very impressive. And it fits in that 
10 hour battery life that, that you've come to know and love from Apple. Now, uh, Patrick, um, this thing has uh, four speakers and uh, they're, they're strategically placed. How does it sound? How's the iPad Pro sound? Yeah, so it, it sounds really good. I've been a little critical of, of some of the iPad uh, sounds, particularly uh, uh, when I look at, at solutions like the, the Surface Pro 4 that are, are front mounted. Uh, there's just a difference. And I think what Apple did is took that even a step further to get to four speakers where it actually modifies the highs and the lows depending on uh, how you're holding it, which I think is 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 really cool. And the other thing I found really interesting was that, you know, they had a choice. They, they took a lot of the area of the inside that they could have stuck more battery. I think this thing could have gotten 15 or 20 hours battery life, but instead they invested that volume into uh, a much higher quality experience. I, I really feel that the bases are are a lot better. iPad iPads have 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 sounded a little bit tinny to me in the past, and I feel like uh, you're really getting uh, a lot more bass. It's not like having a subwoofer, but quite frankly, uh, it's a lot better than anything I've experienced uh, with any of the iDevices. Yeah, I've already uh, went and played some. Apple Music uh, tunes and, and rotated the screen to have the highs and lows, switch speakers and all. It works pretty well just based on very limited testing. It's, it's fairly impressive at first glance. Now, the device actually uh, comes with, or actually you can purchase an optional smart keyboard and a pencil. Uh, I think it's a major faux pas in that the reviewers obviously got the, the accessories, but I went to the Apple store today and I tried to order online. You can't get those yet. So I've got an iPad and no smart keyboard. So I've I'm propping it up with a Surface Pro, uh, Pro 4, actually. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. You, yeah, but it, hey, it works. <laughs> um, so, Patrick, maybe you can tell me what it's like to, to actually use the smart keyboard because I think it's going to be a must-have accessory and then perhaps even the pencil as well. Yeah, so, Kevin, uh, on the keyboard is a, is a key. Smart keyboard is, a, is an important point here. Uh, I've been using uh, an iPad with a keyboard since the first iPad came out, and, and I've used it for note taking, uh, doing uh, basic things. But but I'm really impressed with the key with the way the keyboard worked out. Uh, the spacing was good. Uh, you know, I'm not a big I don't know. I I don't complain over travel in a keyboard, and I'm writing I'm writing research papers on this thing that, that might be 10 or, or 20 pages long, I was actually very, very comfortable with it. Uh, the one piece that I would have liked uh, would have been a backlit keyboard. Uh, Apple is actually going out of their way that says, hey, if you do want a backlit keyboard, uh, Logitech have, has one. As far as them not being at the store today, I, I, think, that is, I think that is a miss. Uh, and I think that at a minimum, uh, somebody should get some sort of a smart cover, and, and hopefully at the store there was a smart cover for you to at least to get a little bit of tilt uh, action uh, out of it. Uh, the other thing I like that the other Bluetooth keyboards don't have is uh, with the Bluetooth keyboards that I use with the current iPad, I always felt like I, I never actually took it out and used it uh, like, like, a, like a tablet. Uh, but with the uh, Smart Connect technology, it's really easy to to take the tablet uh, on and off, and, and and I do appreciate that. The the one thing I want to add as well is this is not meant to be a protective case that you want to throw on the concrete. Uh, <laughs> it is it is a cover with a keyboard, exactly as the uh, exactly as the name says. And what do you think of the pencil? You know, the pencil, I, I actually like it. You know, it's funny, you know, like like I think all of us on here, uh, we've all been uh, around the block when it comes to pointing devices, uh, whether it's with a palm, whether it's pen windows. Heck, I, I worked for NCR 25 years ago when uh, pen and, and windows was going to take over uh, over the planet. Uh, I never attract, I was never really attracted to it, but I have to say that they've removed a couple obstacles uh, for me uh, one of them being um, the refresh rate and the latency. There is nothing more annoying than putting so something across the screen and having it then catch up a microsecond later. And again, I don't care if it's a microsecond. If you notice it, 
uh, you will notice a difference. And 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 one thing uh, when I read up on the pen is what Apple did is it's about a 240 hertz, so 240 times a second. Uh, it's it's testing it. The other thing that I saw thought that was neat that I totally missed when I was at their launch event was the fact that the harder you press, and even if you press on the side, you will get this effect like you're using uh, a, a lead pencil or a piece of chalk uh, or a crayon, and it really added uh, an extra uh, an extra uh, element to it. I have to say the charging when you plug it into the side of the iPad. The first thing I thought was, gosh, this isn't kind of Apple-like. I've got this thing sticking out of the side uh, of my iPad. But if you really want to make things look great, uh, they have an adapter so you can plug it into any uh, any type of uh, lightning uh, uh, charger. So the final thing I want to say is, is that what's different here is that when you look at other pen-operated systems, a lot of the times they were so thick that it just wasn't comfortable to go – and, and take notes on. And if you think about it, look at a legal pad. A legal pad is really thin. It's not as, as thick as a, a small town uh, telephone book. And I think that's where uh, the thin nature of the iPad, the iPad Pro, which, which by the way is about as thin as, as my, my iPhone 6S Plus, uh, I can see more people gravitating toward this because essentially the angle between the device and um, the pen is, is a good angle that you feel more comfortable using. Pat, you mentioned that you you know you write long 10, 20 page research papers on this and you're happy with the keyboard. I think one big hang up that people are getting stuck on and compare this especially to the Surface Pro products, there's no mouse or trackpad support here. And I kind of understand why that is. iOS is a touch friendly you know, system. That's the way that Apple envisions it. Do you think they're missing out here? Or do you think they should perhaps consider adding maybe uh, support for their Bluetooth keyboard or a uh, Bluetooth mouse rather? Boy, Kevin, that is, that is one of the biggest questions out there. Mm. Personally, uh, would I use the iPad Pro more if it had mouse support? Uh, it would. But I think that the fact that they're not providing that support says that they're not trying to necessarily take out the PC uh, or the Mac uh, or the Surface Pro. Where I do find a little bit of a challenge is when I'm uh, moving around pictures uh, or uh, changing, copying and pasting. And, and for me, and again, you know, I grew up with, with PCs and Macs for a long time, uh, using the right click and using a mouse when I'm moving text around or moving, let's say, pictures or an object around is really tough. Uh, what I haven't done yet, because I think I know the outcome, is tried to do a PowerPoint presentation. I think that would be difficult uh, with, with using uh, just my fingers and, and the keyboard. And I, and I think that that is where areas where the Surface Pro 4 uh, PCs and Macs uh, uh, excel. So I don't, another proof point, Apple's not trying, you know, Apple's trying to create uh, a, an entity of their own. And I think, you know, how about those millennials uh, or older who grew up on, on smartphones and touch? Are they more agile uh, with their ability to, to, to move objects around uh, uh, let's say a spreadsheet or or a research paper. Uh, I think time will tell. Well, I'm like you, Patrick. I I have been using a keyboard uh, with my iPad since the very day that it shipped uh, in 2010. Uh, I've used a, a wireless Bluetooth Apple keyboard. It's been great. I loved it. But uh, but yeah, that gesture. Let's say you want. Let's say they're cut, you want to insert some letters between you know between letters on a word. You actually have to reach up and then you have to wait for the magnification to go and then you have to kind of move your finger a little bit to get the thing and maybe it's not just right because the text is so small. It's really awkward, really, really awkward. I'd love to see them support the mouse in the same way that they supported the keyboard with the iPhone. When the iPhone first came out, there was literally no physical keyboard that could be used with the iPhone, and everybody complained about it. You look back in 2007 at, at all the complaints about the iPhone. They were all about the on-screen keyboard, which nobody was used to, and which everybody said, nobody's going to get used to this. Everybody hates it. And now, 
you know, uh, you know, uh, BlackBerry comes out with a physical keyboard and people are like, eh, who needs it? We got the screen. Uh, so, you know, they, they change that behavior by not allowing third party or even Apple uh, hardware key, uh, keyboards, but then quietly and slowly, they just sort of subtly supported it with Bluetooth, and now you can use a keyboard with the iPhone or the iPad. I'd love to see them do that with the mouse with, the, with this iPad. Just, you know, sure, yeah. get, you know, six months, a year, don't let anybody use a mouse, but then all of a sudden just throw a switch and, 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 and issue a new version of iOS and just su quietly support the mouse for people who want to do it. No, you don't want you have to make a big deal out of it, but it would be really great. And by the way, I'd also love to see that, you know, control paste kind of keystrokes to, to copy and paste and do simple things like that, because right now that whole poking at the screen when you're using a keyboard thing doesn't work at all for those of us who want to use a keyboard. Yeah, Mike, so. and, and in fact, uh, I, w one thing I, I failed to mention about the keyboard is I would have loved to have seen a home key because yeah. with iOS 9 and multitasking, uh, you know, you do want to go home uh, a lot uh, and there is touching the screen. With the physical button I found on my Bluetooth keyboards, there's a dedicated home button, which, which was much appreciated. And, you know, one thing we haven't talked about necessarily yet that, that, that was so striking was uh, I tried to, like I said, tried to initially use this as a as a PC or Mac replacement, and and some things that came back uh, really kept getting me back to you know this this isn't meant to do this is is what I'll call your file state. So with a PC, a Mac, or a two in one Surface Pro four things like that, you know that all pretty much all of your files are going to be on that device. And let's say a segment of them will be up in the cloud. Uh, you go into, let's say, Outlook or your email program, pretty much when you do a sync, all of your files are going to come down. That just isn't the way that iOS works. Uh, let's say you're getting on a plane or going into a place where you have spotty coverage. I'm, I'm taking uh, Thanksgiving break and heading down to a place that I know coverage stinks and I don't know if I'm going to have Wi-Fi in my rental house. And... And I'm thinking, okay, how do I know if I can get all of my files on my iPad Pro? Um, you know, you, you just don't know. And, and what it does is it, it requires a, an extra set of thinking. You know, let's say you're using OneDrive for a for iPad, you can pin files down. I think you could do that with uh, Box and a couple other uh, programs, but taking your entire work file or something like that, you have to actually think a little bit more about that. And I actually think uh, upon usage that could keep people who are comfortable with that model on their PC Mac or two in one uh, from coming over to, to the iPad Pro. And that, that behavior is even easy on a Chromebook Pixel, which is a cloud device. Uh, so that is a great, great point. Patrick Moorhead is at more, moreinsightsstrategy.com and on Twitter at Patrick Moorhead. Patrick, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Mike. Appreciate right. it.